what does empowerment it, mean to you when when I when someone says the word empowerment what comes to mind for you um well empowerment for me really is well <laughs> the first thing that comes to my mind is always this word freedom <laughs> but <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's really about becoming um, kind of self-regulating, you know, and just being free again to to be who you are and who you want to be and create not only um, who you want to be, but also, you know, the life that you want and... <clears throat> And having the tools to do that on your own. I mean, yeah. this is uh, this is one of the things that also, when I work with my clients, it's really important to me to give them the tools so that they can then take them and use them so that it's not, you know, they don't have to, not, not very good for business, but, <laughs> you know, I don't want them to need to come to me forever, right? Yeah. It's really important to me. So, for example, I always teach my clients self-hypnosis on the, you know, one of the first few sessions so that they can use it if they want to. Wow. Um, the, the Sedona method is, is all about it's a personal development tool so it's absolutely 100% a tool that you can take um, and use on your own um, so I really think that um, you know people have so much power in them you know but we we just tend to give it away you know yeah. to to circumstances okay. to to governments to to parents to you know doctors to you know whoever it's just you know make my decisions for me and um tell me what to do and you know how to live my life and and even you know on a subconscious level even unintentionally and even when we disagree you know all the like subconscious conditioning for example about how we should behave and even and in, as women in particular and you know what we should look like and what success looks like and what attractiveness means and you know all this kind of thing this yeah. is also you know disempowering us so it's all about you know becoming free from all that and free from the conditioning and really just just being you and just being free as you are yeah. um just loving yourself um i agree with uh, that What's so, um, looking back at your life and, you know, the journey that you've been through, through all of this, which, you know, I can't even imagine if we actually got into the details of everything, but what's the number one lesson that you've learned from your life? Um, I think, okay, this is, an, <laughs> this is again, something that I could like explain and discuss for hours, but another big kind of uh, understanding that I think I had always and um and throughout my life I've been having more and more um clarity around that and more experiences to not exactly prove it but kind of demonstrate the truth of that mm -hmm. even though I'll, I'll tell you what that is in a second even though it's not uh, an exactly provable thing um, but I think my biggest lesson and realization is that I am here alone. Wow. Okay. And that, and that's not a negative thing. I'm saying this in the most positive way. Okay. You know, I, I exist alone. I live alone and I die alone. And I don't even know that anything outside of me exists. And as far as I know, everything happens within my own consciousness. So when I really fully recognize that it basically kind of cancels out the struggles and the fear you know on the human level if that makes sense yeah and it kind of really helps you to get that um courage also to just go out and do things what have i got to lose there's nobody here nobody's yeah. judging me like everything disappears when i do you yeah. know and also this uh, and also non-attachment to things um, and having no expectations of others, you know, because if I'm fully here, completely alone, then everything um, is really just, uh, uh, I mean, this is not a new idea, right? This is, has been taught in many other teachings and philosophies and all that, but everything is just a mirror, you know, to, to your experiences. And so, like, I've got nothing to... Um, like in terms of uh, ego, even, you know, the whole, you know, losing your ego to become more evolved person, whatever. Like for me, it was more kind of like, okay, well, hang on. But if I'm actually alone, like literally, utterly alone, there's 
there's nobody else to present myself to. Yeah. So like, it's not about trying to be humble or trying to lose my ego in any way. It just, it, it just drops because yeah. it just doesn't mean anything, you know? So I think that's probably been my biggest lesson. And I, ha I have had moments um, in my life as well. Again, long stories too much for, too much for now, but I have had moments where I actually thought that I was, losing it like really losing it and and I was it was drilled into me when I was growing up that something was profoundly wrong with me and and uh, and I uh, also because I, I couldn't communicate because of my upbringing but it was drilled to me even more you can't communicate with the world and there's something really wrong with you and you know you're never going to be able to um uh, uh like get along you know in, in this reality and in the world and so I, I did have some moments where I had uh yeah, odd experiences. Um, and I thought I was losing it. I thought I was like, oh my God, I'm never gonna come back from this. And am I going crazy? And am I gonna just be locked up? And how, how do I bridge between what I between that world that I feel like I'm kind of stuck in and this world, the supposed reality that everybody's agreeing on, you know, how, you know, what? And the thing that saved me, like literally saved me was, uh, th there was one night in particular that I was really going through, uh, almost a breakdown. It could have led to a breakdown, genuinely, but I kept repeating to myself this kind of mantra, I'm alone, I'm alone, I'm alone, I'm alone. And that's, and it literally saved me. I was having all these like stuff going on in my head and like literally voices in my head, you know, something that sounds really like there's something wrong with me, right? Yeah. And, and after some time when I would kind of repeated that phrase to myself, suddenly something happened and just kind of broke through and just flipped the whole thing. Yeah. And these voices, instead of them kind of being like all over the place and talking like about me and around me and all this stuff, suddenly, because I was alone, then they were suddenly just a part of me and they were, they could not harm me in any way whatsoever. Because wow. how can you be harmed when you're alone? You cannot. Yes. So suddenly those, those voices stopped and then they literally turned to me and said, welcome, we're at your service. What would you like to know? <laughs> and really? it was, yeah, that was, and that was that kind of, I mean, it was a mind blowing experience. Again, it's such a long story. We can't get into it today, but it really also triggered like another huge opening for me. Um, so I think, yeah, I would say for me, this is the biggest thing, my biggest understanding uh, or lesson, if you like, of life. And I really do think that on a level that's kind of <clears throat> beyond, you know, what we see as our kind of like human story, I think that just, it really just allows our issues to drop. Yeah. You know, because everything is just an experience, no more than that. It is just an experience and just a story and nothing can possibly harm you. I mean, what's the the worst thing that happened? I'm going to die. You know, I'm going to die. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, and I don't even know if that's, um, yeah. I mean, it's hard to explain, but I think you know what I mean. So, yeah, um, definitely. It's so interesting that that um, is the concept because, you know, and I 100% agree with you, not disagreeing at all. But a lot of times, people need to remind themselves that they're not alone. Because a lot of times people feel alone. Mm -hmm. And that's what causes the anxiety or the frustration or the, the nervousness is feeling like they're alone and the needed to be reminded that they're not alone. But mm -hmm. I love the fact that you're finding power in the absolute versus like, you know, objective versus subjective, like mm. objectively, yeah, you're a hundred percent correct. We're totally alone. But then mm. there's another reality in the world that we live in where we actually aren't alone. So I love that you're even breaking it down even more. And I don't want to say forcing, but like forcing yourself to be like, okay, comfortable and calm in the knowing of that, you know, I, I feel mm. like that's so interesting. Yeah. And, and you know what, there's also another thing. I mean, many people, when I, if I talk about this and they kind of make this, um, 
they conflate alone with loneliness and that's not what I mean and even on the contrary you know the fact that I was not only understanding but once I started to live the idea that I'm alone that's when I was able to create far more uh, deep connections with people because you then come into relationships with um, no demands, you know, and no needs and no expectations. Because I know this is my own experience. This is my journey. They have their one, which is completely separate to mine, yeah. you know. And so I actually think that um, this, uh, yeah, that absolutely it serves me in the best way. And, and it doesn't it doesn't mean that I am. Um, uh, alone as you know in a human experience I sure I have people around me but it actually helps me to feel even less alone and more than that I have the universe on my side like what could what, what could you ask for more you know that for me is the meaning of being alone you know and that is that, that that's the biggest thing yeah so um definitely hmm. I agree with that um I want to ask you know obviously you know you've been in in coaching or in business for for over a decade, right? Over mm-hmm. a decade, well over yeah. a decade. Um, can they find you at the website? By the way, the website above your head is that where they would find you? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Only yeah. Sorry, it is my Zach though with a K rather than H. But yes, but that's <laughs> the correct website. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Um, I do want to to ask. You know what exactly is your business? You know, people who are listening live right now. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, they're here because they're resonating with everything that you're saying. Um, can you tell us kind of what you do, you know, for your business, what you do for mm-hmm. humankind? Sure. And, um, um, yeah. So, um, so first of all, um, yeah, as I said, the, the self hypnosis. Yeah, we didn't really uh, continue um, on, on that story, but um, when I when I arrived in the UK a um, couple of years later, I started training in um, hypnotherapy because I just it was the perfect thing for me and in Israel in fact it wasn't legal to practice unless you were a doctor a psychiatrist or dentist so I didn't really wow. even yeah. know about the existence of it as a profession so um so I trained in that in London and then uh just as I had um qualified um fully qualified in that that's when I discovered the Sedona method um which is a um very powerful ridiculously easy and simple personal development tool and it's all about freedom which of course i resonated with immediately and it's all based on the fact that it's that you are completely unlimited other than by holding on to stories so it gives you um, not just an understanding but an actual practical tool for you to um just let go um oops so keep coming out uh, to let go and just release <clears throat> Uh, and by stories, I mean any kind of um, unwanted or negative feelings. They can be um, thoughts, they can be beliefs, attachments, um, uh, goals that you might have, uh, re- unresolved relationships, whatever it might be, really anything and everything. Um, and so um, so once I discovered that, I just, I was, you know, so mind blown by that uh, because really I had... Um, with, with self-hypnosis, when I was working on myself, I was, uh, it, it really, I mean, it was hugely transformative for me, but there were a couple of things that it would just felt like it was, you know, hitting a wall. And I just thought, okay, you know, this thing is just going to be here forever, you know, never going to be free from this. But then with the Sedona method, it just seemed to just drop away. And um, it's on my website as well. I, I, I liked to um, describe this at the time. I said that for me, hypnosis is uh, like opening the door to uh, to the source or to your subconscious or to the you know universal intelligence, whatever you'd like to call it. Mm. But with the Sedona method, the walls just disappear. So it's just wow. like you're just there. It just is, okay. you know. So, um, so I was so enthusiastic about that, and then uh, I went and trained in that too. <clears throat> and then um, over the years, I worked with um, many people, mostly uh, around stuff to do with stress and anxiety uh, and confidence. And then gradually, I went into uh, performance-based uh, coaching. And then when I did my master's degree in hypnosis, I had to do um, uh, I had to do experimental research. 
So uh, I did research on uh, the efficacy of hypnosis in helping university students uh, reduce their um, academic and exam anxiety so they could do better. And at the time, uh, mental health uh, was a big issue at universities here in the UK. This was some years ago. I mean, it still is, but then it was becoming more, more of a, a thing that people were aware of. <clears throat> so my plan was to... Um, get that degree and then take hypnosis into universities and, and empower yeah. young people. And I thought it was a great time to do that too, because mindfulness had already become very popular yeah. here in schools and universities. Mm -hmm. So I thought, great, uh, this is what, this is what I should do. Um, however, um, I realized that hypnosis was not welcomed <laughs> so much um, <laughs> as, as mindfulness. It was still seen as kind of alternative, you know, yeah. and it just a bit, you know, people had misconceptions about it. So it didn't really work out. And so not a negative thing. I just realized, okay, so this is not my path. And that's when I uh, started working more and more. I mean, I, I was working with them anyways, but I just started to focus more and more on working with uh, women in business. Mm -hmm. And then it um, became more and more specific. And so now I work uh, specifically with women who are either setting up or, uh, or who want to set up or who are already running their own business. Mm -hmm. so, um, so basically I use hypnosis and the Sedona method and also um, more traditional coaching uh, tools as well. But it's all about, uh, it's all about performance. It's all about confidence. Um, so, I mean, obviously if you're in the beginning of your journey or if in your middle of the journey, it's entirely different things that you want to be dealing with, but it is yeah. essentially about, um, <clears throat> resilience and self-belief and your relationship, whether with people, with money, with yourself. Um, so, um, so that's what I'm doing now. Um, that's and awesome. I, I absolutely love it. I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, also because of my background, um, <clears throat> I'm really passionate about not only empowering people, but empowering women in particular. Mm -hmm. um, and I really feel that, um, I mean, there's a lot of talk about it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, you see it all around you, you know, in our kind of circles of, you know, women empowering women, but it's actually, there's actually a huge need for it. You know, even yeah. though there's a lot of talk about it, there is a lot, a lot of need for it. And I would really love to see a future where women are doing what they want yeah you know i yeah. would really like to to see more of that without the without any pressure without you know feeling like they need to get it from somebody else and yeah i just love doing this yeah that's awesome i love that and i uh, how long has the sedona method been um around i don't know anything about it oh is the it, sedona method is old it's i, I mean um it, 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 sounds, it was created it, i ask because it sounds like desert like it sounds like it's ancient it? <laughs> no, it's not it's not it's not that ancient um no actually it was uh, it was created by a guy by the name lester levinson and he was okay very very briefly i, I will say that he was um uh he's not alive anymore but he was um a, a very successful business person uh who was living in new york i think back in the 50s like 1950s and um, and as the story goes, he suffered three heart attacks or something. And after the third, he was told that he only had a few months uh, uh, left to live. And that's when he uh, started to kind of become more conscious of his uh, inner world and stuff that he was holding on to wow. and negativities and things like that. And so he, uh, he decided to leave New York, leave his business. He moved to Sedona in Arizona. And that's when he started to kind of uh, developing his ideas about letting go and he started to have like these group of uh, like you know followers kind of and uh, and then one of his followers by the name of Hale Droskin uh, he is the guy that actually developed it into the systematic tool that it is today yeah. so it's been around for a while like in the 70s 80s uh, I, I don't know when the when the actual book was written uh, I've got the book I can check but maybe later than that uh, yeah. it is the 90s but um or maybe even longer but um but it's been around for a while um i think it's i mean in the uk it's still not um not very uh, not very known yeah. at all i think it's uh, it's a lot more known of in in, in north america uh, because um also because of the, um, the film the secret have you heard of the secret have yes. you seen it yes yes so so hail Dwaskin, uh, this guy who wrote the book uh, who i've also uh, 
trained with. Uh, so he he had a small part there. I don't know if you remember, but he was the guy who was talking about politics and saying, if you are against uh, a per uh, well against someone, then instead of being against them, just be support somebody else. I don't know if you remember that, but anyway, so all the all the people who were in that film at the time, you know, became big stars and all that. So the Sedona method became really big. Yeah. Um, after that. Oh, that's um, awesome. Thank you for that reminder. I actually remember that part definitely. Mm. <laughs> it's a nice reminder. It's simple. Mm. But I, I, honestly, I, I encourage everybody here who's listening or who might be listening. Uh, regardless of me, just check out the Sedona method because it is so powerful and it, it's so stupidly easy to use. And, you know, and all this stuff about, you know, the power of now and being present and all this thing, you know, this is all great stuff. Yes, amazing. And I understand it intellectually. But how, you know, yeah. how do we actually experience it in our day to day lives? Yeah. And this actually gives you a super easy and practical tool to, to do that. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I um I so appreciate all of the, you know, nuggets of information that you shared with us today along with your story. I do want to ask though, um we do still have, you know, 45 minutes in. We do still have uh people hanging out here live listening and I'm assuming they're mm -hmm. uh, appreciating your story and, and what you're sharing with us. So I do want to ask advice mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. you. Um what would some advice be uh, that you'd give to females who are feeling a lack of control or that freedom that you're talking about in their lives? What would you tell them? Um, okay, these are two, two, two very different things, though, control and freedom. So let's look at control first. <laughs> okay, I can appreciate that. Um, so I think... I mean, first of all, it's also important to distinguish, uh, you know, what kind of what kind of things we mean about control, because absolutely there are things in the world that we have no control over. Okay. And we need to, uh, you know, be an acceptance of that. And the more we can accept that, then the more control we feel, if that makes sense. And one of the things in the Sedona method, uh, for example, <clears throat> Um, according to the Sedona method, everything that we experience comes out of underlying three wanting, subconscious wanting. So these are wanting control, mm -hmm. wanting security, and wanting approval. And so what we do is we let go, we release the wanting control. Because, you know, the more I'm going to be chasing, the more I'm going to be wanting control, the more lack of control I feel, right? Because you're not going to be wanting something that you already have. Yeah. So actually, it's by the letting go of that wanting, that's when you feel more in control. So that is definitely my absolute number one advice is to let go of wanting control and then you will feel more in control. But it's also really, like I said, it really depends on what kind of thing you mean. Uh, it's, you know, some other things that can be really useful to do is to ask yourself uh, and even, you know, again, journal or put it on paper, which is really useful and just ask yourself, okay, what is the situation? What is it that I feel out of control around? Or what, what are the things that I, I feel are out of my control? And then ask yourself, okay, <clears throat> what are some things that I can influence? What are some things that I can um, <clears throat> change in myself that will, or um, what things can I choose to see differently that will maybe not change the situation, but will change how I feel about the situation? And wow. those are things that are always going to be under your control. Because again, it's always up to me to choose how I react to things. Right. And, you know, in the end, everything, 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 everything that we're after, any goals that we might have, everything that we want to achieve, yeah. as well as everything that we want to run away from or everything that anything that we are afraid of is never going to be a thing and is never going to be an event or situation. It's always going to be a feeling. Always. You know, so whatever it is that you want to get or that you want to get away from, ask yourself, you can ask yourself, okay, what is this? What feeling am I trying to avoid? Or what feeling will that give me having that, right? Even if it's whatever, a million dollars on my, my dream home, you know, it's not going to be that. It's going to be the feeling that it gives you. What is it going to give you? A feeling of peace of mind, a feeling of, uh, again, a freedom or, you know, it, you know, it's personal, but, um, but then once you once you can identify that, then you can start creating that feeling for yourself. 
And yeah. then you can feel once again more in control, regardless of what the situation is outside and whether you're getting to, you know, whether things are as you want them to be or as they yeah. should be in our yeah. minds, you know, as opposed to the way things really are. Yeah. You know? I totally agree with that. I want to put uh, I want to put this on. They're talking to you here. If you want to read that mm -hmm. out loud. Sure. Uh, so I live near Sedona. If you haven't visited, it's a very beautiful. Oh, no, I've been there. It's, it's gorgeous. I know I've been there. I've been there twice to to train with the method. Um, yeah, I, I'm slightly jealous. Wait, the, method there. <laughs> is, the method is taught in Sedona. Uh, yeah, so that's where oh, they're that's so cool. so he moved there and then that's kind of where the center kind of grew and and that's where Hale also lives nowadays. So that's where they train. I mean, they do um, courses and stuff like that online as well. Um, yeah, but uh, but yeah, that's where that's where it generally is. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. It is, Looks yeah. like a movie set. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been there? Yeah, I went uh, to the Grand Canyon mm. for I think seven days and then one or two of the days out of those seven days we visited drove over mm. to Sedona. Um, mm. And yeah, I, I have pictures, actually one of the pictures on my website for her version, that life mm -hmm. is Sedona. Yeah, mm. we did. Uh, it's a, it's a beautiful picture of the, uh, the landscape there. Lots of Browns, <laughs> <laughs> lots of Browns and very warm, definitely different mm. than Florida, which is where I'm from. Mm. but uh definitely gorgeous so listen this has been absolutely fantastic i so appreciate all the time uh you took out of your day to hang out with us do you have any closing thoughts before i close up um i don't know uh <laughs> yeah okay. i mean thank you so much for having me <laughs> yeah it was it was really great to be here i uh, really enjoyed it um and yeah i do again highly recommend checking out the sedona method and if you want to check my website then um please do i uh, forgot to mention that if you are interested in the sedona method only and not related to business i do also offer that so this is particularly just for um sedona so i have a sedona program um, and check out self-hypnosis as well. I know that, you know, so many people have ideas about it that are inaccurate, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's so empowering, you know, and I, I really like to see it as a, I call it like next level meditation, you know, because it's, it can, the, the states can be similar, but it's a lot faster and easier, not, uh, not, sorry, not easier, faster. And uh, I find deeper and it's far more directed to a result. Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah. I but thank agree. you so much for being here. Yes, yes. Thank you. And then for those of you that are listening live still, we so appreciate the support and the love that you're giving to us and the platform. For those of you watching on replay and still hanging out with us this far in, we appreciate it. Make sure you hashtag replay and give us any comments. We are always around and about on social media and ready and willing to read comments or questions or anything thereof. So I'm going to close up. Thank you so much for joining us here on Her Version. This community is expanding every single day and it is filled with females who are striving to do better than they did yesterday. For those of you that are new to this podcast and like content like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you follow, like, and share. If you have an amazing story to share of struggle to triumph, be sure to reach out to me here or at herversion.life. I am your host, Sabrina Victoria, and I am so grateful to be here sharing a platform that allows people to share in their truth and inspire others.